Everything Film is supported by Vancouver Acting School, where you can turn your passion into your career. Enroll now for post-secondary diploma programs in film, television, and voiceover with fully accredited diploma and part-time programs taught on site. If you want to know, learn the biz, check out VancouverActingSchool.com. At the Shark Club in downtown Vancouver, Everything Film on BNN Bloomberg Radio 1410 AM, also 1035 FM HD3, Season 2, Episode 7 of Everything Film, Joe Leary and Patrick Shelton. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I think we got a good lineup today. I'm pretty happy uh, with um, the show, and we got what? Uh, it's episode seven. Like, that's season two, that's episode seven. That's come a long it's way. It's amazing. It's amazing. We welcome Tyson Hepburn, who is a producer and showrunner of a show called Pets and Pickers, seen on the Discovery uh, Channel on Thursday evenings. Uh, Tyson, we've had a little chance to get to know you uh, just off the air, but now let's say hello to you on air, and how you been? How you good? good. Yeah, doing good. So, uh, Pets and Pickers, uh, an interesting concept. And again, I guess, do you call this, is it like, are these character uh, oriented shows? Are these reality shows? What what exactly is the term for the shows that you do specifically, Pets and Pickers? Yeah, it's a it's a documentary series. Docu-series. Yeah, docu-series. And it's kind of blending together two recognizable uh, type shows. You've got animal hospital shows, which there have been a million of. Uh, but you've got a really cool uh, storage wars component uh, and kind of crossing the two together for something new and fresh. Okay, so what would be a, a typical episode of a pet and a picker, <laughs> like, you know, for lack of a better... Right. What would, what would someone expect to see? Yeah, I mean, so the cool thing about uh, this very special animal hospital uh, in Richmond is you, you can go there and for a lot of folks, especially that bought pets uh, during the pandemic, uh, they are in a tough time. They might have lost their job. Something might have happened. They go into the animal hospital uh, and they might not necessarily have the funding to pay for urgent care that uh, their pet desperately needs. Uh, and the animal hospital will help cover the bill, sometimes fully, sometimes partially. Uh, and they do it with through their thrift store. Okay. where they get these abandoned storage lockers uh, from a storage company. And what happens is, is these storage lockers are open. These uh, picking team picks through them. They find the valuables in these old storage lockers. And then they are sold at the thrift store. And 100% of the proceeds go back towards the animal hospital. And, and again, if anybody has seen those types of shows, I mean, Storage Wars comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you pan, you pan for gold. Sometimes you get nothing but garbage. But mm-hmm. what, what have been some of the finds or discoveries that you've managed to uncover? Uh, we have, we found all kinds of stuff. I mean, uh, we found uh, Lady Diana stamps that were worth like hundreds of dollars of collector stamps that were super cool. We found a Leslie speaker you would have seen in episode one that uh, sold for thirty five hundred dollars. Could have gone from even even more. What some people have said, um, and then. Uh, all kinds of things like, you know, before uh, I, we started filming, we unfortunately missed this, but they found uh, black tar heroin in one of the bins. They found, uh, we, we found uh, guns and these like crazy uh, swords, like sheaths and like uh, knight swords. Uh, we found like a- S&M, like uh, sex uh, paraphernalia. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, we found, uh, yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff. And everything sells in the store? No, well, not that stuff, obviously, right? That's gross. It's you know, there's no, there's no, there's no, uh, there's, there's no, no market. market. There's no, no market. No. So um, I was watching an episode, and uh, again, uh, you're working with animals, and even though it's non-scripted, it must be storyboarded to some degree. And working with animals, it can be very challenging. Have you had challenges with them? Um, yeah, I mean, we we try to be. Uh, Um, as much as we can be fly on the wall in the animal hospital, you know, you can't exactly tell people to start and stop and and that sort of thing. And and these animals oftentimes come in with really, you know, uh, urgent situations and their owners are in, you know, I mean, yeah, distress, you know, like it's uh, like the the vets say they're like, um, they're they're like family doctors, right? It's like your kids are, are, you know, in, in harm's way, right? So we try to very much, uh, you know, film from, from a distance and, and not get in the way and, and not, uh, it's, those are the best stories, the ones that just kind of come fly through the door and, and are totally unexpected. And the other thing I was going to mention to you, because I didn't see it in the episode I saw, but 
Uh, I'm not a big fan of, of, of uh, injured people or animals or anything like that. And do you make a conscious effort to kind of downplay? I mean, obviously, these an- animals are in distress when, in order to be brought into the vet. Mm-hmm. But you don't really want to exploit that and showcase that. No, I mean, the, the show, so the, the one of the main goals for me in terms of this show is to really educate people behind the scenes in terms of, uh, you know, the kind of stress and the, and the pressures these vets are under, uh, and as well to make it a real education piece uh, for, for people that are pet owners, you know, and might not know this and that, and, and you know, and, you know, why are these bills so expensive when it comes to vet care? Um, it, because it's incredibly complex. You've got staff, you've got... Um, you know, you've got labs, you've got uh, equipment, all of which is um, in- incredibly expensive and, um, and, you know, integral to the process. Our guest is Tyson Hepburn, who is the producer and showrunner for Pets and Pickers on the Discovery Channel. Um, where did this concept uh, germinate? Like, was this an idea of yours? Was it a collaborative effort? And what brought these two uh, components together? Right. Uh, good question. I mean, when, when, when I went to the animal hospital, we were filming another TV show, actually, about animal behaviorists. And uh, as it happened, one of the animals had an injury. We went to uh, Raps Animal Hospital to use their hyperbaric chamber. It's the only animal hyperbaric chamber uh, in North America, at least, where they basically pump 100% oxygen into a you know, chamber to help uh, uh, get the, stimulate the tissue and... and um, healing right so anyways we're there uh and then we found out that they had this incredible process of and and you know fundraising through this non-profit animal hospital they're one of the only ones in the in north america that's like that uh, where they do this incredible amazing concept of selling stuff out of these storage lockers for, for those that haven't seen it um in a nutshell is it obviously it's reality and you can't control reality but uh, is it is it, there's a lot of emotion uh, attached to these episodes? Um, yes, very emotional, right? I mean, you've got you've got people that are uh, you know they've got their basically their kids, you know, uh, that are you know they've come in and they've got uh, very urgent care is needed, and and so they're very you know tied to that animal, um, and it's up to the animal hospital in a lot of cases to kind of like find a way to make it work. You're a, you're a local guy. Yeah, local guy. This yeah. is a. This is a. You were telling me this shark club. You're. A, you have yeah. history in the yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is the. This is the spot. I. I yeah, I'm a, this is great that you guys are doing this here. Mm-hmm. By the way, this is. Uh, yeah, old stomping ground here. So. Oh, wow. We um, we can't reimburse any gambling losses that you've suffered yeah. <laughs> uh, at the hands of the NFL. But. Yeah. Uh, but so Tyson, I want to go. Um, for me, I was uh, part of our show is people that are working in the industry and stuff, as you know. Okay. So um, outside of the show. Like, what does the producer do? And, and, and like, I, I want to, in kind of layman terms, executive producer. So you obviously see the show and then you pitch it, right? So mm-hmm. you're like, so you're walking in. So like, why can't I call up the Discovery Channel and say, hey, I got an idea for a show. Like, how do you differ than the average guy off the street and, and how you, your process to build a show? Yeah, I mean, well, I guess, number one, I have uh, some relationships with the people there, obviously, right? Right. Uh, And then number two is, you know, it's one thing. In the old days, you know, they used to be able to pitch these kind of things on paper. So they would just, you know, oh, here's the show, right? When when film and, and this stuff is incredibly expensive. Now it's so easy for anyone to pick up a camera. And, and put together a reel. Right. So they want to see, um, a lot of cases, I think they want to see tape uh, in terms of like a sizzle reel. But obviously there's, you know, a ton of competition, right? There's a lot of people sending in, in sizzle reels. And so the, the tape's got to be really good. It's got to be a really, um, you know, quality reel, right? Uh, and for Pets and Pickers, for example, we were in development for over a year, Right. Uh, and that was, um, you know, basically funded by Tyson Media, by my company, right? So, okay. Yeah. So you guys, you know, you know about that, right? Starting, launching things, and and it's, so it takes time and money. So you could have literally been stonewalled at any point, and you you'd have invested your time. And you, yeah. And someone could say no. 
Well, yeah, that it's happened a go. lot. There's there's a Got lot of shows it. we're not talking about that. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. that happened to. Okay. But yeah, there okay. are other shows in your arsenal, so just um, give us a couple of the uh, the titles you're involved with. Yeah, so Rust Valley Restores, I'm still executive producing on that show, a uh, show I'm incredibly proud of. Um, and it's a it's on History Channel. It also airs on Netflix. It was actually a real big hit on Netflix. It was top 10 in many countries across the world. Cool. Um, and it's now on Motor Trend. It airs on Motor Trend in the U.S. So it's a classic car show. Um, and we, yeah, the, I mean, it's m- more popular than anything what we've really done before. So it's Is that the s- one with the guy that has, like, a tons of cars out in the... Yeah, up in Shuswap. Up in Shuswap, yeah. and he's, like, just tons of them. Yeah, right? and he yeah, 400. Get, he, like, they're almost all gone ridiculous. Now. Almost ridiculous, he, he, right? yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he auctioned them all like off. Like, how so. did that even ha- Like, that's almost like a hoarder of cars. Like, I saw that, and it's yeah, just he is it's a, bizarre. He is a car like, it's hoarder. Like, like old shells of like mm-hmm. Corvettes and everything. He just had it. Hey, yeah. Different right. strokes for different folks. Wow. Yeah. 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 He's, he's literally, I mean, he's a car fanatic. He's a car nut and he's a car hoarder. Right. So his son uh, and him basically sold, uh, sold the lot um, wow. last year in last, in the last episode of season four. Um, he, he, uh, he sold it all off. So, well, it's kind of, it, it, it's neat because Joe, like you go and you look at these guys that have never done any film work. So the guy, like, what was his name be? The guy from Rust Valley. Michael. Like, yeah. So you go and then they turn into these characters that are just lovable, like mm-hmm. wonderful people that you go like no mm-hmm. training, mm-hmm. no nothing. And they're like, Oh, I'm never going to get rid of this car or yeah. whatever that is. And I think that's the draw of reality TV or whatever you want to yeah. fall in love with somebody that isn't an actor. Right. Would you agree? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, right? You, you want to find those unpolished, you know, raw, r- real people that have a yeah. passion for for something. Right. If it's vet care or cars or picking or whatever, you want to find those people that like have a talent, a goal, you know, but they're just really interesting people. Yeah, I, I think that um, the one thing, I, I watch a lot of reality television. For some reason, I find it very captivating, even if it's a subject matter that I may not have a lot of interest in. But I just love to see the way these shows come together. And I remember an interview uh, with Jeff Probst when Survivor started, seeing him. And he said that, yeah, initially you're, you're concerned and you're aware of the cameras. But after a certain period of time, you're not playing to the cameras. The cameras are kind of playing to you. Is, would you say that's fair in what you do? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I imagine especially when you're starving and, (laughs) you know, in like a desperate place like that. Yeah, I mean, the best thing about Mike Hall was he literally didn't totally forgot the cameras were there, right? Like he would he would just be, you know, uh, talking to a person like a like a great actor, right? He would literally like forget the crew was there and just, you know, be there with the cars, right? And be there with his clients or his his people that he's restoring the cars with. And he would <laughs> he'd totally forget that we were doing a scene, right? So, uh, yeah, the, the camera guy always, one of the camera guys always screaming at him, like, you know, open up to the camera, right? That's the one thing yeah. we'd always needed him to do because his hair, he's got like this giant uh, glob of like dreadlocks. Yeah. Wow. And so you can never see his face. So you've always got to like, he's, that's the one rule is he's got to have his, his face to camera. And he rarely did. <laughs> so for people watching this or listening to this that have an interest in the aspect of reality television, What's a piece of stellar advice that you would offer someone? Something that they may not be aware of if they're going to pursue something in the reality realm. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> no, I don't want to say that. I mean, like, uh, so for like as a producer, so as a producer of reality TV, I would say that you're kind of like an actor almost, right? Except it's what you're like. What did the one producer tell me? It's like being an expensive actor uh, in the fact that you face a lot of rejection. You got to put a lot of projects forward. And it's just like brute force and like keeping going and like, you know, uh, always trying to stay positive. Um, it's really all you can do, right? Because you, you do, you face like, you know, door shuts, door shuts, door opens, door shuts, door shuts, right? So, um, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of no's. Any, uh, knows. any interest in maybe doing a reality series on a couple of middle-aged men putting a film show together at the Shark Club? Hey, who called middle-aged? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you guess 32, right? 32. You know what? 32. You know what? It's radio. I could be any you age, could right? Be, yeah. I don't know, right? Oh, I shattered that myth. Sorry. <laughs> you got to face the radio. You know. That. Uh, Tyson <laughs> Hepburn is the producer and showrunner of Pets and Pickers Discovery Channel Thursday nights, uh, and there's so much more in your arsenal. How do people find you on social media? Uh, yeah, you go to our Instagram, uh, Tyson Hepburn or Tyson Media. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of we're promoting the show all the time. You know, so check it out. It's also on the CTV app. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we're ho- hoping for everyone can tune in. And a uh, quick little football question. You're a big NFL fan? Yeah. Okay. So what happens with Drew Brees? Does he come back or uh, what's the plan? 
Yeah. Drew Brees, wow. Uh, with with the same, no, with a new team. Now, with a new team, right? yeah. He retired and got into the broadcast yeah, booth. Yeah. Now he's decided to unretire. Destination yeah. unknown. What do yeah, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe is he Seattle, looking at Brady, going, "Hey, I can still do Se- this." Seattle's got an opening, right? Seattle yeah. does have an opening. Yeah, yeah. maybe Seattle. Maybe. Uh, well, we'll see if I'm um, curious to see if Russell Wilson lights it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that'll that's, be that's interesting. A crap shoot. That's that'll a crap be interesting. Yeah. Hey, if if uh, if Deshaun doesn't stay out of trouble, then maybe yeah. he could come to <laughs> Cleveland, right? Who knows? <laughs> come to Cleveland. Yeah. Go, uh, Tyson Upburn. A pleasure to meet you, man. Thanks for joining us. Okay, Cheers. thanks, guys. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it.